Hey folks, Rebecca back for episode 38 of the Quintuple M. This is the Monday Mr. Money Mustache Motivation. I do this every Monday where I pick a blog post from Mr. Money Mustache. He is big in the FIRE community. And if you have never heard of him, I always link the blog post that I'm reading from in the description box below so you can go and check out his blog, check out other comments on the article that we've read, and see what you think about Mr. Money Mustache. So, today's episode is from June 23rd, 2011. Why I Really Retired from Corporate Work. I've been reading some incredibly thoughtful and zoom out and look at the entire human race from the perspective of an alien articles on other blogs recently, and they forced me to rethink some of the reasons I quit my job as a computer engineer back in 2005. Two of the articles which I wouldn't recommend digging into while at your own work unless you are a very advanced slacker because they are so long are these. Are you suffering from careerism at early retirement extreme? Here the author points out that at some point in your career your advancement or survival may start to depend on politics rather than performance. The Gervais principle on a blog called Ribbon Farm, dives deep into a theory that all big companies are actually made up of only three very tragic sounding levels of people. While quite bleak overall, the description is strikingly accurate and is really just a workplace specific zoom in on human nature itself, the annoying tendency some of us have to compete for power when placed into large groups. The dark side of early retirement on Financial Samurai suggests that perhaps quitting your job is a result of being a bit of a wussy who was afraid to make it to the top rather than a mustachian hero. He also points out that early retirees tend to go around promoting how good it is to be an early retiree, much like people who move to Florida talk endlessly about the warm winters. These tendencies sound pretty annoying, so I'd better be careful myself. Yeah. When I read all of these things together, it made me wonder a bit about my true motivations for quitting. Was it because I was afraid I was not good enough, so I just quit instead? This is a sensitive topic because I was still just a non-management employee by the time I retired. No major waves were created, no newspaper headlines were written, and I'm sure the other worker bees seamlessly swarmed in to replace my empty cubicle and pick up the work I left behind. The company didn't miss me a bit. Was I quitting because I wasn't good enough to reach the top? Was it because I had started to see the true nature of big company politics and I didn't like them? As a 19-year-old engineering student just finishing his first year of university, I scored my first engineering summer job at a very good company. It was an incredible thrill and I will never forget the utter joy of even entering a real office building. The big windows overlooking professionally landscaped grounds, the luxurious front lobby and fancy bathrooms, the electronic ID badges, and even the exotic low pile office carpet and my very own cubicle and desk. Objectively speaking, I can tell you that professional offices are actually fucking awesome places to work compared to gas stations and convenience stores. But over the years, you grow accustomed to the luxury and human nature starts to find things to complain about rather than just being permanently starstruck. I call this the California effect, where people from California and especially Los Angeles are permanently jaded because they were born in a place that is already absolutely beautiful with mountains, ocean, nonstop perfect weather, infinite money, and a free society in which you could easily become a multimillionaire. They also have earthquakes though. <laughs> the arrangements of tropical flowers which bloom and lick at your ears from even the lowliest McDonald's drive through are infinitely nicer than even the most advanced garden in my own hometown. But jaded LA residents insist on finding problems with it instead. And compared to Southern California, the rest of the country seems even crappier because SoCal is actually the nicest piece of land in the country. Note that I'm talking about geography rather than culture here. So goes it in the office lifestyle as well. After I became used to the building and the cubicle and the oversized paychecks, I did start to notice my efforts to improve company morale and profits were sometimes falling upon deaf ears. Many of the more senior managers of the companies I worked for seemed to be content with maintaining a peaceful status quo rather than really taking risks to improve the company. And that's when it hit me. 
At a big company, people are not actually trying for ultimate achievement. They are trying to prolong a stream of paychecks because they are living a life that depends on several more decades of these paychecks to come in an uninterrupted fashion. I did have the pleasure of working in some smaller and more dynamic feeling companies early on in my career. Those were a lot more fun and I could imagine someone making a longer career out of hopping from one youthful place to the next, leaving only when the company grew too large to be fun. I did a couple of hops myself, but then the 2002 tech recession hit and temporarily extinguished the supply of startup companies in my area. So I settled in for a longer haul. So yeah, I would have to say that the dull and never-ending nature of big company work is what did me in. It was definitely pleasant enough to endure for as long as I needed a paycheck, but after that point was passed, the gain was less than the pain, so it became logical to leave. My self-employment gig, on the other hand, is worth doing regardless of monetary factors. That's the kind of work that builds up energy rather than subtracting it and sucks away abdominal fat and health problems rather than creating them. So I don't plan to ever quit that one. What will your job or lack thereof look like in retirement? It's worth thinking about from time to time since you'll be getting the opportunity sooner than you might expect. Let me know down below what you think of that too. What will your job or lack thereof look like in retirement? It is worth thinking about. And something that I've thought about too, um, Truthfully, I don't really know. Uh, I mean, obviously I will continue this YouTube channel. It's gonna take me a long time to reach financial independence to get to the point where I'm even able to retire early. Yes, my life depends on several decades of my paychecks to come in an uninterrupted fashion to get to financial independence. I'm doing what I can, obviously, to save most of those paychecks or use them in such a way that's going to advance my financial independence goal here. But I really don't know what life will look like post-retirement. I've, you know, worked my entire adult life. So it's something that I've thought about. And of course, I'll keep the YouTube channel going just because I really like the creative outlet that YouTube is. And you know, I was around in the financial YouTube community for a long time before I ever started my own channel. So all of these other channels that I enjoy following and commenting on, it's really just a great community. So that gives me a sense of, you know, social aspect, I guess you could say. I'm actually a extreme, like extreme introverted type of person. I really have a hard time meeting people and if left to my own devices, I would be perfectly happy just completely alone by myself, left with my own thoughts. For some people, that is like the stuff of nightmares and horrifying to think about that. But people like me, no, I would love that type of situation. And I have read before that people who choose to retire early after reaching financial independence, if they are sort of naturally introverted, tend to handle that transition better than people who are extremely extroverted and all of a sudden they've retired early and all of their friends and colleagues are still working during the day and they don't know what to do with themselves. Also people who um, tie their identity in very strongly with what it is they do also have a hard time post-retirement because everything you know, it's so common in American culture when you meet somebody, oh, what do you do? And we identify with what our career choice is instead of what a passion project might be. If somebody asked me what I did for a living, of course, the first thing I would say is, oh, I do ultrasound for a living. And, you know, I wouldn't even mention my YouTube channel. You know, YouTube is just like a hobby for me. But really, if YouTube is something you're passionate about and you enjoy, you should say, oh yeah, I'm a YouTuber and you know, my day job is XYZ, whatever it is. But I hope that given that we're into episode 38 of the Quintuple M, y'all are starting to see why I like Mr. Money Mustache so much. His, uh, his blog posts are really thought provoking. So even though I don't know what life will look like post-retirement, I'm really not worried about it right now. I know some people do struggle with that transition, but I think that I won't. I suspect that I won't. 
I could be horribly wrong, but I really think that um, it'll be a good thing for me mentally, physically. I won't have to work third shift anymore and have a really crazy sleeping pattern. I'll be able to get back on a normal circadian rhythm. That in and of itself would be a wonderful thing. Um, I really don't like the fact that I am so tied and dependent upon my paychecks in order to, you know, make ends meet. I know most people are though. The fact that many people in America can't cash flow a thousand dollar emergency, you know, that tells you the state of things for Americans. We, um, most of us are dependent upon getting a regular paycheck. So, you know, me working towards financial independence is just another peace of mind thing that, you know, I don't have to have my job. I don't have to have my paycheck in order to cover life's expenses. That's, you know, the independence that that offers you, the freedom, that's my motivation for trying to reach financial independence. I'm a very independent person and um, the fact that you don't have to depend on a paycheck anymore to cover your financial expenses in life is very appealing to someone like me. Also, you know, the fact that I work in healthcare, it, it's something that I've thought about before, but healthcare is constantly changing and technology is constantly being developed and coming out. I suppose, as unlikely as it is, there probably is a small chance that my career may not be necessary in future years. There could always be some sort of new technology coming out. Perhaps eventually ultrasound will be replaced as an imaging modality. I doubt it. It could happen. I don't think it would happen in my lifetime, but it's a possibility. You know, artificial intelligence is another big thing that I've been seeing recently where people are bringing up how artificial intelligence is starting to grow so huge that eventually um, a lot of jobs may be replaced by it. And I think that ultrasound is another job that probably won't be replaced by artificial intelligence, but who really knows, right? So all of these things are just, you know, more motivation for me to try to reach financial independence, try to set up my life so that I don't have to have a paycheck to survive. So yeah, that's my thoughts on this article. Let me know what you think down below in the comments and I will see y'all on the next episode of the Monday Mr. Money Mustache Motivation. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, scroll down and give that subscribe button a little tap tap taparoo. Thanks, bye. Tap it in, give it a little tappy. Tap tap taparoo.